okay, so we kind of left you on a cliffhanger. Um, to get you caught up, we took the automobile for a tune. The cart was jammy. Mwah. It was so jammy on the dyno. Car sat overnight, started up in the morning, ran like a bag of dicks. Absolutely a full bag. They're soft, they're, they're pliable. It was just, it was awful. Bag, bag of dicks. Really, really poopy. So the working theory now is that the tuner, when he went in to change the data logging, actually put the base map back on by accident, which was not a problem, uh, but we just couldn't reach him for a while. Communication issues, busy guy, makes sense. But we ended up getting the tune from him. I reinstalled it using the fancy laptop that we purchased because we actually didn't have one. Um, and it still doesn't run. Yeah. That's how you know that, aside from knowing that these are original because they say Hyundai on them, mm -hmm. um, that brown ring just shows its age anyways. You're supposed to replace these every 100,000 miles. Okay. Hot. Miles. Hot and fresh okay. Hyundai repairs. Yeah. But who's this? My name is <laughs> Tyler. He's Tyler. <laughs> Why are you Tyler? Dude, I just, I'm just riding the wave, bro. These are the buttons that he's pressing. Now you can see he's an elite hacker. He's very good at it. He doesn't even hack in English. All the stuff on the screen, I'm doing great. Great now, stuff. Here's the crazy thing. You ever seen somebody open a sword and then they close the sword and you didn't see them cut? <laughs> this is a touch screen. You haven't even seen his hands moving this whole time. It's amazing. A lot of touch screen, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to start the car for me? Yeah. So. Uh, we, what are we in? We did, what did we just change? We changed it to forward? Play? Yeah, we're just playing with the IAC. Good one. Nope, as soon as I gave it some throttle, I didn't like that. Are you, are you feeling, you're feeling defeated at this moment. No, I'm looking at the board for a quick, easy win. So he's a liar. <laughs> this is the board. Walk us through the board. Where are we? Where are we? Where are the pink? So pink is us. Ignore the rest of that. We don't have a 350Z or a Honda Fit or a wrap. Okay. But we have Ford oil truck. Uh, these boys are going to do a thing. They're going to start the car up. Do I have to do anything with the laptop? They're going to start the car. Start it. I want to try to do a log. Jip, 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 Behind the clouds exists a full moon. Tonight, the monsters are out. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's suspension day. It's finally suspension day. I'm very excited. Uh, yesterday we drove the car around. Uh, the engine's still doing a weird like in the, in the start, but they took it for a boot around and I guess whatever Tyler changed is feeling a little bit better or is close to the tune or whatever wires got bumped around or what I, I can't re recreate the problem, which is a big red flag. Um, it makes me nervous. I want to introduce you because if you're watching this blog, you maybe not know the idea. Uh, but there is a one concept that we're basing the whole team on this year. It's called the 46 second rule. So 
most runs in FD are 23 seconds or less. That's it. You're out, you're out driving your car for 23 seconds. Two runs, so a battle, a lead, a follow, that's 46 seconds. That's it. The car needs to be ready. So you drive 16 hours, you spend like two or three months preparing your vehicle for those 46 seconds. That's it. That's the whole thing. Essentially, if you think about it, you do a qualifying lap, which is 23 seconds. You do potentially a second t qualifying lap, which is another 23 seconds. And that might be your whole, you spent all these months, all this time, all these hours and dollars, and that's it. You don't qualify, you go home. Those 46 seconds are what determine what you're doing and where you're going to be. So our 46 second rule is anytime that you're going to modify or operate or change or do something to the car, it needs to work perfectly for only 46 seconds. I know it sounds really crazy. It should work for more, but it, it shouldn't be that uh, it works for the whole season but it has to work for those 46 seconds. The fact that we can't recreate this like in the motor uh, is, is threatening that 46 seconds. It does not adhere to our 46 second rule. We're gonna talk to the tuner today. We finally got a hold of him. That's awesome. He's a very nice gentleman, but he's also a busy gentleman and he's calling us on Easter. So thank you to Turbo Mike. He's gonna call us on Easter and go through, a, go through the motor with us. Um, just to make sure, and hopefully we can achieve, achieve attain, a, a, a chain, achieve, a chain, achieve um, our 46 second rule. Where are we right now? What's happening? Big booty bitches. Big booty bitches. Oh my god! <laughs> it's thirsty. Uh, no, what's uh, what's happened? We're like, what's what has occurred today? Angle. Angle. Oh no, it's Matt. Damn. Angle. Angle. Here. <laughs> More, please. What else has happened today? Boats and hose. <laughs> okay. Fire extinguisher. Whoa. So you, we got that guy. That guy's attached to that guy. But we also got that guy there as well, which is sick. He's chilling. So in case of double fire, two fires happen at one time. You have Pro a fire tip. in the front, you have a fire in the back. What do you do? Well, you got two opportunities. Pro tip. Because if you use your fire suppression system, you're out for the rest of the competition. But if you have a small fire, you can put it out with your handheld and still continue to race. Yo! Sick. Any other sick mods? Epoxy the electronic connector for the ECU. Do, 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 do. I can put my arm back on. You can't. Ah. Play safe. It's a Canadian advertisement. Uh, oh, what is a big one? Big breather? This, this is the big booty <gasps> bitch right here. Take a big breath. I, I think this is more of an exhaust thing. Mm. <sighs> Yeah, let all that heat out. What happened though? Give me this. All that heat. From that girl right there. Why is the car raised all the way up on jack stands? Why are we underneath the car? Mr. Queen? Uh, we're gonna take all the suspension out pretty soon. No, hey, pretty good. We're gonna throw it all in the garbage. Wasting all my monies, man. This is a dark video, but I wanna show you guys some of the conflicts that happen here. So take a look at this jam nut here. Can you give me a, li a light, actually? Just behind you. Oh, you got one? Uh, I need, over here. Thank you. So. Welcome to the zone. You can see one of our conflicts here. So let's start the video again. Hi, I'm Quinn. This is Quinn, I'm under the car. Uh, you're gonna see one of our conflicts just up here. And then you're gonna see another conflict here. And if you look closely, this conflict is self-clearancing. 
So it's been self-clearancing itself for a while. And yeah, these are some of the things that we gotta fix. Because it's uh, done frig de rude, hey champ? I, I think it's a little broke. Actually, we have uh, we have all our suspension out today. Uh, well, some of our suspension, we have all of our coilovers out at this point. We still have to take all of the suspension out of the car. We're still doing what we call sweeps today. So sweeps uh, is where we actually take the springs out of the coilover. Check it out. All of our springs are kind of over here. We've got our wide variety of different springs. We've got our coilovers here. Uh, these are actually gonna go back in the car and then we're just going to pretend the car is going over bumps and monitor how the geometry of the car moves and changes and things like that. You can actually see we were planning out some of our steering angle and lock and stuff. Um, not with, not with the, the springs pulled out, but basically we have not a lot of steering angle in this car, <laughs> uh, which kind of sucks, but there's not much I can do to get more. There's a little bit I can do to get more, but not a lot. Anyways, this guy's recently rebuilt. You can see our collar up here is actually a little high. Um, there was some uh, questionable. Uh, it got rebuilt. <laughs> uh, so did this one. You can see there's some freshness to it. But these, our left side, are actually a little bit older. In a sad discovery today, you can see a little bit of debris here. This is old shock oil that has exited the top of our shock here. It is likely that this is a blown coilover. These are actually Fortune Auto prototypes and they have been uh, beaten on aggressively. Fortune Auto has been really good at working with us, which I'm really stoked on. Um, uh, what's interesting with these coilovers and the, the prototypeness is that this there is an adjustment knob at the top. There's adjust knob at the bottom. This one actually adjust bound, but there are essentially four rough adjustments when it comes to the current era of fancy coilovers. There is low speed bound, there is high speed bound, low speed rebound, and high speed rebound. This knob at the top actually adjusts low speed bound, low speed rebound, and high speed rebound. This guy separately adjusts high speed bound which is interesting and mm, a little bit confusing to try to plan for. So um, it would be really a lot better if this was completely just bound and did both low and high speed and this did low and high speed rebound. It's, it's been super nerdy. So we monitored how much track width change there was front and rear. Um, on the rear we actually monitored how much uh, longer the car gets because there's a traction arm that, that pushes the wheel back as you compress. Uh, we monitored camber changes and we monitored uh, toe changes. Now the rear had no toe. There was no active toe in it which was quite surprising because this is a more modern car but we couldn't measure any noticeable toe change. However, in the front things got a little funky. <laughs> so we go from toe out at full ride height when the car is all the way up. But as the car starts to slam down, the, the wheels actually start to toe in. And we found it was really aggressive when we got the car super slammed. So you can kind of see it here. When we're uh, up in the air, we had about, I don't know, one and a half millimeters of toe out. And then at about half height through our stroke, we have um, about three millimeters toe in. And then once we get fully slammed, we have almost eight. <laughs> so. There's some funky stuff going on up there. As much as offset uh, offset tie rod spacers make sense uh, in a in a two dimensional setting, often in a three dimensional setting they actually are a problem. Um, the reason being is this ball joint here actually starts to move out when you have this, and that makes the tie rod and the lower control arm actually not the same length, resulting in some weird bump steer. Um, not in a 2D plane. If the wheel never if the wheel never moved up or down, you could actually plan it out pretty easily. But because this wheel moves up and down, um, and we've got most of our bump steer set correctly on our knuckles here, um, it actually causes a uh, a conflict with the Ackerman um, through the stroke. And so you actually have to try to make this arm equal in length to the lower control arm as best as you can. Bum 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 bum. So there's our lovely. 
what the French call bel joint, bel joint. Uh, that I assume that's French. Um, yeah, she's a little crunch, crunchy crunch. Additionally, though, I have great dreams of this part of the knuckle actually being shorter that way, so these two bolts are closer, so that I can pull the top of the tire in because uh, we run a big space around here, and we want that scrub radius. And so it, it, it's of no benefit for us to have all this clearance. If anything, we, if we could tip it back, it'd be good, but we would also run into more tie rod, or tie rod, bell joint issue. Bell joint issue, so uh, uh, offset, offset rack spacers are a bit of a problem often. Uh, let's, take, uh, let's take adventures into the world of adventures. Today, tomorrow, and more adventures for you and me. How about that changing toe? And you're like, Quinn, that, that, that's a, a variable toe. And you're like, no, that's called bump steer is what that's called. Check a rule book for de decal placement. Hey, we did that already. Okay, we achieved some goals. Um, so we're running two rear sway bars, two of the OEM ones, and you're like, Quinn, that seems really ghetto, but actually it's not. It gives us a lot of opportunity for adjustment. So rather than buying an expensive, fancy adjustable sway bar, we can run two. That gives us three settings of stiffness. We can either have two bars, so it's stiff. You can have one bar, so it's medium, and no bars, so it's it's soft or, or grippy. And so it, it's actually, it cost me $2 to send to the laser cutter or the water jet cutter to get those brackets made to literally $2 a bracket. So for $2 a bracket, we can have basically a, a racing adjustable sway bar using two OEM sway bars. It's green. Under the toolbox, there's lots of green there. You see lots of green here. You even see lots of green there. But if we go around the back, obviously there's some green on the wheels, some green in the paint, and you'll see some green here, that's for sure. But that's green AF. Dylan over at Powder Coat Express. Powder Coat Express did this up for us and it is sick. Hell yeah. Speaking of things that start with a P, here's some PBM, some Part Shop, part shop Max. We got drop knuckles and the booty. We got the uppers for it. We got all the bits and bobs for it. That'll match our lower control arms from them. Uh, we're gonna go all fancy bushings as well. And then we even have our sway bar mounts coming up. So that's gonna be shortly. And we'll eventually have an FD RX-7 sway bar on the front. I know that they're not gold like the rest of the stuff, but gold! Uh, and recently we actually fit so these are the FRS front lower control arms uh, with the FRS knuckles. However, if we venture over here, this is actually S13 front lower control arms and we I test fitted these, they actually fit better than the FRS ones. And so we're gonna go that way in the future. And our piece de la resistance, coming, coming over to sneak up under his armpit here is our uh, version one PBM knuckle. So we're gonna be using that as a reference for uh, getting rid of our drop knuckles, which is something we've been talking about for a while. So yeeto, neato, streeto, don't streeto, take it to the track. Chungunk, oh yeah, and Canon update with the rain sock, specifically with the rain sock. Yeah. So some ask, you know, what's it like at the end of a long day working for Jack Motorsports? So you finish up in the garage, you head back to the back of the house, you navigate the gate. Come on. There's, there's a little bit of a fonz to the gate. You trudge up the back deck and you find a man hidden behind a wall. And that man is preparing the garlic toast because 
not only has lovely Paparu greeted you as you come in the door, but he's prepared a two-course meal. A lovely chicken. Oh my gosh, you're excited. I'm, I'm excited too. Lovely chicken Alfredo with shrimp. We got the chicken, we got the Parmesan, and we have the cook himself. Ta-da! That's what it's like to do a day at Jack Motorsports. <laughs> Okay. Are you I mean, I, I was going to ask the viewers, what should I start with? Should I start with the salad or the shrimp chicken Alfredo? It looks like this man, he, he's hidden his salad over there. But the salad was unprompted, so it means that he wants the salad. So he's doing it the way he wants to do it. Now I'm watching.